In this video, we're going to look at how you should articulate how a program works, the importance of arguing for the correctness of a program, and using logical reasoning, appropriate test data, and user feedback to help prove that programs you have written work as intended. Types of input data to consider when you are testing would be valid data. This is any data that you would normally expect the user to input. Invalid or extreme data. This would be any data which you would expect to generate an error message if it was input. Borderline or boundary data. It is very important that you pay extra attention to testing data at the boundaries between different cases to ensure they're dealt with correctly. Let's have a look at a simple example to put these types of test data into context. Imagine a program has been written which asks the user to enter their age from 1 to 90 and their gender as either the letter M or the letter F. Come up with three sets of test data which could test this program for valid, invalid and borderline data. Pause the video and then check your answers. So we can see here uh, for the gender option uh, we would say valid data would be M or F as that's what was stated uh, up in the problem. Valid data for age would be 20 or 80 as any value from 1 to 90. Invalid data uh, for gender, male, uh, letter Q, the number 47, each of those should generate an error message as we are only accepting the letter M or the letter F. Invalid data for age, we have negative figures, a floating point number, a number that's higher than the maximum we were allowing, and indeed a letter. Any of these should generate an error message. And then we have borderline data. Now for gender, the borderline data is the same, the, the test is, is not really relevant. For age, it is really important. We asked that the program should allow people to enter their age from 1 to 90. It's quite common at these boundaries that people use greater than or equals to, greater than, less than, and they forget to test the actual extremes. So in here, we would expect naught to be outside the range, but 1 should be valid. 90 should be valid, but 91 should be invalid. So we're supplying data to check that the extremes or the boundaries are valid. OK, now you've understood that, let's try another one from a slightly different angle. This simulates another type of question you might get in an exam. Imagine a program has been written which will take as input the raw scores that students get in an exam. The maximum mark for the exam is 100, the minimum is 0. The program will output the average mark of all the students, the highest mark and the lowest mark. The program should be tested by supplying it with four pieces of test data each time. Come up with four tests which cover most options and complete the following table. Think you want to be including tests that test valid, borderline and invalid data. Pause the video and then see how you did again. OK, so here we have four possible tests and their test data. Obviously other answers are acceptable, but let's have a quick look at how we did here. So the first test is designed to accept valid data. We've given it four valid bits of input data. Test scores are allowed to be between 0 and 100. We've given it 15, 30, 45 and 70. And we'd expect the maximum mark to be 70, the minimum 15 and the average 40. The next test is also designed to test valid data. We've given it four valid scores, as you can see. They're all in the range of 0 to 100. The difference here is that when the four scores are averaged, it will chuck out an average mark of 40.25. So we're testing valid data, but we're testing can the program deal with a floating point answer, a result with a fractional part. We must make sure to test borderline data. Um, so now we need to make sure we've included the values 0 at the lower end and 100 at the upper end. And we should have a maximum of 100, a minimum of 0, and an average of 45. And we need to test that um, the program won't accept invalid data. So we've taken a value here outside the range 105. And in this circumstance, if our program is working as expected, it should produce an error message. It is also important that you are able to take into account user feedback when carrying out testing. 
The end user or client is a vital part of any software development process as they are the customer. Getting them involved in testing the product as it involves taking into account their feedback is essential, especially if you are following a development methodology which has an iterative approach. You also need to be able to suggest and justify which test strategy you would use for a given situation. Look back at our previous video on test strategies and make sure you fully understand the difference between each one and consider why one strategy might be used in preference to another in any given situation. For example, are you able to explain why white box and black box testing might occur quite early on and continually during software development, as opposed to acceptance and integration testing, which would typically occur towards the end of software development? There are many different ways of carrying out and recording tests and depending on the project you're doing and the level of which you're carrying it out at, typically you may use or construct some kind of test table. Now, there is no correct format for a test table, but some, some of the information here is typical of test tables that candidates will create. So we record what you are testing, and we also record any input or actions that have to be carried out for that test. And you can see here the test is being carried out three times, supplying valid, borderline and invalid data. You would then supply the expected outcome. In other words, this is what you'd expect to happen when this test is carried out with this input data or action. This is typically a test plan. At a later stage, the plan would then be carried out, typically by someone independent of the person who wrote the plan, and what actually happened and occurred would be recorded in this col comment, uh, column. Typically then, there may be a variety of other columns, which include, for example, the user's feedback, um, a statement of whether the test has passed or failed or a requirement's been met, any further action that's been taken, or indeed a link off to evidence to prove the validity of the test or to show and record how the test failed. Evidence found in your test table, along with more formal feedback from a user, say in the form of a user interview and evaluation against a requirement spec, is really important to improving and refining a problem. You shouldn't simply carry out tests that you've written and say a system is complete. You should gather extensive test data and user feedback to a problem and feed this back in to improving the problem and refining it.